this uh, part, we'll talk about cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. Which is commonly known as blue-green algae. Now, cyanobacteria are considered as the first organisms to release oxygen. Because we know that when life originated, the atmosphere was reducing. There was no molecular oxygen. And most of the organisms or most of the cells which survived before that, they were one unicellular and they were uh, utilizing some other source for obtaining their nourishment. Cyanobacteria, they used solar energy, they have pigments and they used water as one of the raw materials. So from water, hydrogen was used by them and oxygen was given out as a byproduct. So they are considered as or they are believed to be the organisms which converted reducing atmosphere into oxidizing. So they converted reducing atmosphere to oxidizing. So this credit goes to these cyanobacteria and they are slightly different from eubacteria in having certain extra structures. Now when we say that they are performing photosynthesis, that means they have to have pigments. The pigment, one pigment is chlorophyll A and this pigment is present in the membrane. So they must have some membrane bound structures. So before that, let us talk some basic things about cyanobacteria, then we'll come to the structure. They can be unicellular, they can be filamentous, or they could be colonial. That means the cells could be found in the form of a colony. Some of the cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen. For fixing nitrogen, the enzyme which is required is nitrogenase. So here the enzyme is nitrogenase. And this nitrogenase, it works in anaerobic condition. So now when it is working in anaerobic condition and this particular bacterium is producing oxygen on its own, then how does it create that anaerobic condition? So this nitrogen fixation, it takes place in special thick walled cells which are known as heterocysts. So if we draw a filament, say we are talking about nostoc. So here these are the cells and this is a filamentous structure. And we would find that some cells, they are thick walled and they are known as the heterocyst. So this is the heterocyst. And here nitrogen fixation would take place. Some other filamentous form, this is not stock that we are talking of. If we talk of oscillatoria, in case of oscillatoria, the cells are again filamentous and here we do not find any heterocyst. So it is not necessary that a heterocyst is present in all types of cyanobacteria. Now let us come to the structure and then we will take up the pigment part. This is the same peptidoglycan cell wall but it is multi-layered. Around this there is a gelatinous capsule so this jelly-like material is present outside the thick cell wall and inside this there is cytoplasm. But this cytoplasm is divided into two zones. The outer zone where there are membranous structures present. The membranous structures are called thylakoids. So these structures, they are thylakoids. They are not in the form of a stack, which we call the granum, but in this is present the pigment. So here we would find pigments like chlorophyll A, 
carotenoids, xanthophyll, etc. So this structure which we have drawn is a thylakoid. And thylakoid has pigments. The pigments found are chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll B is absent. So chlorophyll A is there. Carotenoids, phycobilins, xanthophyll. These pigments are present in case of these cyanobacteria. Now because of these pigments, what has happened is the outer cytoplasm, this outer one, starts to appear colored. So, this pigment, these pigments are responsible for giving this color to this outer cytoplasm. And that is why it is known as chromoplasm. The inner cytoplasmic material is clear because there is no thylakoid, no pigment here. So this is the clear cytoplasm which is known as the endoplasm. And in this endoplasm are, is present that circular genetic material. So this is the DNA or genetic material or nucleoid. Nucleoid which is there inside the cytoplasm. Here there are ribosomes also and these ribosomes are 70S type of ribosomes. Now this is the difference in eukaryotic cells typical uh, sorry in uh, typical bacteria eubacteria there is a peptidoglycan uh, cell wall plasma membrane cytoplasm is uniform no thylakoids, no pigment, but here in case of cyanobacteria, there is an additional thing that is the thylakoids are, are there and these are the pigments which are present. One more difference which we find in cyanobacteria is they do not have flagella. No flagella. Flagella totally absent in case of these cyanobacteria and they perform photosynthesis because of presence of these pigments and they also help in nitrogen fixation. They also are found in symbiotic associations with certain other organisms which we will take up little later. But when we talk of just bacteria, we are talking about simple uh, prokaryotic cells or simple bacteria. And when we use the word cyanobacteria, which are called blue-green algae, then we have to remember that they are the ones who converted reducing atmosphere into the oxidizing by the process of photosynthesis. And for photosynthesis, they have pigments. Now, how come they got these thylakoids? Scientists believe that these cells, they had endosymbiotic organism. That means probably they were like simple eubacteria and they had an endosymbiont, that means another bacteria which was living outside, smaller in size, but was taken in. So now this bigger bacterium had a smaller organism and this smaller organism had the pigment. So basically this smaller cellular membrane structure was taken in and that's how they have developed this membrane structure. So this is called the endo symbiosis. This is what scientists believe that the typical prokaryotic cell which was not having any membrane bound structure, it got this membrane structure by this process. So these are cyanobacteria slightly different from the typical eubacteria or eubacterial cells.